All right, hi guys. So I hope you can hear me right now. I don't mean to be that loud. Okay, so I'm just starting. Uh, I have posted two videos uh, oh, on YouTube. Can you guys first confirm if you can hear me in the chat? Then I'll put up my video also. And then I'll tell you when I'm going to start taking questions. And then we will do all of that stuff. All right. At this stage, nobody is uh, confirmed if you guys can hear me. Okay. If you get somebody can write, yes, we can hear you. I wish I had the uh, the stream. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you. There is a 15 second delay between me speaking and... If you get somebody can write, yes. All right, I can hear myself on the phone, so this is working now. So, hi, how are you doing everybody? So, this is how this works. Okay. Hi, this is me, Bilal. How are you guys doing? Uh, this is the first kind of video I'm done for live for chemistry. So I hope there are no glitches. Uh, we, I will take questions. Uh, somebody's already had a thumbs down. So you waited very long to get a thumbs down, by the way. So that's kind of pretty sad. Uh, you'll see my screen also and my face for a while. Maybe randomly I'll move my face out of the way. But uh, yeah, look, first of all, first of all, I will not anybody who even mentions anything about a leak tomorrow or anything they know about the exam tomorrow as of I will actually disconnect the video and I'll go and I'll ban them from the channel. I don't want to hear about it. OK, uh, some people ask for qualitative analysis. I put that up now the best the best thing is that the only questions and requests I will entertain is where you are very specific about what you want to know. You can just say, okay, could you explain all of rates of reactions exper experiments? It doesn't work like that. We have limited time. I would need six to eight hours just to explain all of that. I don't have that time right now. Neither do you. Um, what would be fun is if either you let me lead, I would like to lead some of the latest papers discussion and use uh, the 2020 papers to explain to you some of the qualitative analysis, uh, if that works for you. There was just salt analysis and organic analysis. As far as quanti quantitative analysis, meaning errors, meaning titration, rates, enthalpy, uh, if you could point to me a certain parts of the actual papers, I'll open them up, put them on the screen and solve them. If there are any specific queries you have, like, you know what, what is the error for a burette? What is the error for a measuring time? What is the, that kind of thing? Or how to make a table for a titration, for rates, for that kind of stuff. So that I can do also, specific things, all right? So uh, I will uh, I will start reading the comments after a minute right now. I know some of you have already said a lot of stuff. I can't go back and read all of it because there's a lot of stuff. Uh, it'd be nice uh that uh, we do 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 yo now somebody's asked this so i'm going to put up questions like this so people know what i'm answering also do you see that comment right there like uh, right there yeah it's right there you see that i don't know how to put it huh, right there i can point that at right there yeah lead two plus to identify is not in your syllabus anymore neither is chromium ions neither is lead ions no neither is chromate ions chromium ions yes but not lead so chromium ions in the syllabus, not chromate, nor lead. Uh, it was European Union, some safety regulations. All right. Um, thank you for those of you who are here just to spread the love. Do that. Um, I'm great. That's, that's awesome. Okay. So now I'm going to start looking at some of the questions that you are throwing my way. Uh, and if I miss some people's question, you can always repeat the questions. Remember, the way the public chat works is that they scroll up and up and up. So... So somebody's asked for 2020 May, June 34, question number one, part four and five. Now that is a very specific question. Now, I'm not saying okay, you have to only ask past papers, but that's a good place to start. You could ask specific questions. So, so basically, if you have questions, write them, save them somewhere for yourself or save them, but don't send them. 
the moment because if you said now if i start solving a question right now understand that when i'm solving a question i'll be focused there so i will not have time to read your messages so the moment i am done solving it and i'll say okay next question that's where i would have a likelier chance of reading your question so that's how i mean don't get upset if i miss your questions because during the time of solving i won't be able to see it all right okay so somebody's also uh talked about uh, call uh, organic tests they are very simple so i'll do them after this so let me show you with my my screen you will see it something like this uh, i'm going to focus on this uh, if you don't mind i'm going to move this right here you guys can all hear me loud right it's i'm loud and as i can be right all right okay um also yes this is a very good question so i'm actually going to take a picture of this question so i can save it all right um this kind of comes right here i could put this right here uh i want to okay where do i put those things okay so yeah i want to take the picture of this question uh so i can get back to this because it will go away sorry this is the first time i'm doing this so okay so 2020 june 34 i'll answer that somebody asked this question and i will recommend this for everybody doing this and i've said this every time somebody asked this question clearly very creative name should we do qualitative analysis first yes 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 i recommend to get most bang for your buck meaning most bang for your marks buck spend as much time early on doing qualitative analysis in fact do the whole paper in reverse now i'm writing on some screen obviously and that will pop up on your screen right now all right uh let me do that also there you go now do you see a black screen in front of you so i'll you so you'll see my face come in between also but do you see a black screen right now mm mhm Mhm. Mm mm. There you go. There you go. So I'll put that fellow there at the bottom left and we'll try to use the top 2/3 or 3/4 of the screen. So I'm also going to be using a cursor here. Um this is the first time I'm doing this so I'm forgive me with the logistics. Do you guys see the cursor? Yes cursor. Do you guys see the handwriting? Say yes handwriting. Um uh, there is also zishan mufti's ask for a specific question i would say uh is there no way for me to save these so i'm going to i wish i had a moderator right now but maybe next time i will plan for one also so your pictures might work so i'll just keep taking pictures of questions all right okay mm. i recently entered as level wasif and if you've recently entered as level and you are doing the exam ne tomorrow then i'm sorry it's just like not feasible not worth it so the only tips i can give you is study well and study well son okay okay so that's coming there oh okay so maybe if i can make my face even smaller and put it right there i don't know you know right there and then you know no 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 i haven't done this before so yeah it has to go somewhere right i'll put it right there yes and i'll make this smaller and sorry logistics of the first day you know there you go so we'll leave the bottom half for everybody else all right so errors of a balance that's something i want to talk about so yes i also have errors for video by the way uh abiha you don't see a screen you do you see a black screen okay There are by the way I have videos on stoichiometry moles many of them on titration so if you can search my channel for titration moles right then you'll get yes really ask for another question on organic chemistry which somebody else did also so I'm going to mention both of those first okay so uh quick on estimating errors for est instruments yes I could discuss that and I can discuss that I'm just saving some of the earlier questions okay and then i'll quickly solve some of the papers too i would suggest if you're practicing exam papers look at the recent ones all right uh, 
uh, extrapolating graphs are just done like you normally would. Uh, okay, so how about we do this? Quickly answer one or two short questions, then look at the past paper question. Uh, you don't need lab report for the exam, guys. And I would say that what one the most important general tip I can give you, and just listen carefully, is and I'll I will ex, uh, the most important tip I can give you is make sure you solve the full paper. Now, what does that mean? Even if you have to, even if you skip retaking repetitive readings, I'd rather you do that, but make sure the solution part, the calculation part, the writing the answer part is solved completely. All right. Okay. And that's important. And uh, that's what I want to do. Uh, so what I would suggest is that you should solve the full paper. Now, obviously, it might seem, hey, you're so obviously talking about the full paper. Now, if you get a two question paper, do question number two first, and then do question number one second. Okay. And spend about 45 to 50 minutes on the question number two and the remaining on question number one. Question number one is the one question you can kind of skip half of also because it requires multiple readings. And generally, even if it's rate, even if it's titration, even if it's enthalpy changes, you can skip some readings and still be able to fake a graph and solve the whole paper. All right. So, yeah, that's something. Now, somebody asked, does line of best fit always pass through this origin? No, that doesn't pass through the origin always. Now, if it's a three question paper, then I suggest do two, then three, then one or three, two, one. Always do question number one at the end and all so that why? Because if you have less time, you can even fake some values because there are more marks there for solving using your bad values than there are for how bad your values are. Most people waste too much time trying to get their values close to the supervisor where they end up wasting so much time that they cannot finish the calculations. You know, there are there are sometimes three marks for 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 readings that might take literally 15 minutes and at the end of the paper there might be two simple parts one mark each that might not, might not even take half a minute and they have equal kind of weightage so you need to spend that time wisely and yes you can always make up values remember that the examiner is not there in the room with you there is no way he knows what you are doing what he or she only knows is what they read so even if you make up values and show him that you're a bad reader or a record keeper you can still solve with the wrong values and your answers are checked according to your long values you cannot lose more than three to four marks for accuracy in the whole experiment you could in fact do most of the uh, quantitative analysis part without taking a single reading and still get an A in the whole paper easily because you have to lose 10 marks to most always skip that A. But there are only three marks for accuracy, so you can always get that A. All right. So tips on improving a practical or efficiency. That's just Sara, can you stop writing that? Uh, it's the same, same thing I'm just saying. This is what I was saying. The way to general improvement take is literally make sure even if you fake the readings, every single part has an answer, especially the last parts of anything. Okay, now that I've put your question up here, Sara, you, could you stop writing the same message again and again and again? And Rahul, you too. There is accuracy and reliability. I, I just, guys, you'll have to stop writing the same thing. All right? It's, I'll make sure that I don't answer that question if that's the same thing you guys keep asking. All right. Okay, so now, um, I'm going to go back and now talk about some questions I took a picture of, all right? Now, I'm gonna keep these comments right here so I can see them dead center, okay? Yes, okay, so there's a question Riri asked. I can answer it very shortly, okay? And that question also has to do with organics, so maybe some of you don't know this theory, but there is a carboxylic acid called methanoic acid that can react like an aldehyde so with tollens reagent it reacts it also gets oxidized by using 
acidified kaminophore. Even acidified manganates react with this. And since it's an acid, it will also react with sodium carbonate. And since it's an acid, it also will react with alcohols. Now, it makes carbon dioxide here. It makes esters there. With tollens, it will make a silver PPT or silver mirror. With manganate, it will decolorize purple solution. Now, this is because the tollens and the manganate are because of this group of atoms. And these group of atoms for methanoic acid, methanoic acid, these group of atoms are what we call an aldehyde group. So they can react like an aldehyde, all right? And this group of atoms is like a carboxylic acid. So they react with sodium carbonate and alcohols, all right? Yes, so that probably would answer your question then, maybe. Okay, Riri, that probably would answer your question. Because, uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Look, I'm not going to answer the question like this. Sir, ye reaction kar de. Like, like, guys, okay, seriously. This does nothing for me. I have no idea. Yeah. Now, Isha asked the question, if I fake a value, how many marks? The maximum number of marks you can lose for accuracy? Three. Obviously, if you're faking values, then make sure that your values at least have a trend. If they're titration, they should be the same. Make, make them the same. If it's graphs, then make a fake graph and just give fake values backwards. But that's what you can lose. Three maximum marks. Um, Bas Basim has asked something which some of you, I just answered that question. Somebody asked about errors of apparatus and this is part of that, so I'll answer that question, if you don't mind. Now, measuring out water has got nothing, measuring out any solution, you can't, just by seeing that, you can't figure out if it will, uh, what do you call it? If you can find error, you can only find error by in fact, using uh, what you call it, uh, Hmm. One second. Bye. Uh, huh. This is better. Sorry. Just trying some vanity stuff at the bottom left. Okay. So, was I saying? Yes. So, when you're finding percentage error, remember the apparatus matters. And some of the apparatus measures things by taking a difference. Some of it measures by only taking one reading. And that's what you need to also know. For example, some apparatus have, some apparatus require you a difference of reading. For example, a burette. A burette works on, so if I use burette, burette's uh, single reading. Remember, everything single reading is about the, uh, the error. So let me, just, let me just make a little table. So if you have, the way to work, your mind works is smallest division and therefore error. Okay, now, and then, uh, yeah, now the problem is, what is the words chosen to ask you? For example, if they said in single burette reading, so a single burette reading may, the smallest division of burette is 0 0.10, but the error is half of that in either direction. But if they say the error in a tighter volume, that is the reading taken out from a burette. There the error is 0 0.05 times 2 for initial and final. On the, on the other hand, a pipette has no division, has only one mark, and its error will be given to you in the question. A measuring cylinder only has no difference in error, has only one error, and its smallest division is generally one cm cube or if it's two cm cube then the error is one cm cube but if it's one cm cube the error is 0.5 cm cube so whatever apparatus you take either burette pipette or a measuring cylinder the errors will be based on that uh, this is the volume so you only use three things to calculate volume you don't really really use uh, what you call it 
conic flask to measure anything it's just there to use uh, okay uh, okay now you know what any question that i'm seeing three three times five times i'm actually just just not even answering them okay in fact i should actually do this now anybody who's just actually annoying people by sending the same message again who is not following the guidelines don't worry i this is what i have in mind uh i you can't guys relax relax by sending something 10 times i have a solution i there's something called uh time out so you guys need to some of you need to go on a time out and i'll answer a question once you see me yeah um hmm. Fatima asked a very good question. So, if to check the substance is soluble or insoluble in NaOH or ammonia, do we add the reagent at once? No, you initially add it drop by drop. Then you add more and more and more and more till it becomes uh, in excess. All right. Okay. Now, yeah, that's nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that kind of works. Yeah, there's some people who are now in timeouts. Okay. Uh, no, Riri, the oxidation of methanoic acid is in the syllabus. Other carboxylic acids, no, but methanoic acid and ethane dioic acid is in the syllabus. Check the latest syllabus. It is there. It's been there for the last two years, by the way. So I don't know who's teaching you, and yeah, maybe they forgot to tell you. It's in the syllabus. All right. Uh, also, so now I'm going to look at some exact, exact, so this is just volumes. The other errors are with time. So it's, you know, half the smallest division. Sometimes they'll say record, to, to, they will tell you record to the nearest second. Even though you might have a digital stopwatch, understand that human reaction time error is a larger error than a stop clock's error. So you'll never really get to uh, what you call it, uh, be able to that be accurate. So it's a human reaction time that takes over. All right. Um, now, I had some initial questions I took pictures of, so I'm going to do that first, okay? A lamellus points uh, is not in the AS syllabus. Just that, understand that a point that is anomalous is basically, let's say you have a straight line and you have points like this, close enough, and then one kind of sticks out. That point is anomalous, meaning you have not used that in your line of best fit drawings. Let's say you get a curve like this and you start realizing okay wait a minute this looks like a good curve if i ignore this point so i will ignore that point and make this my line of best fit or a curve of best fit all right that's how i figured that one out um all right mm. yes um okay Okay. Yes. So line of best fit is just simply not drawing the line. All right. That's all it is. All right. Nothing more than that. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So now huh, that was that about anomalous point. Then it's... May, June 2012, somebody asked that question. 2020, May, June 34, question number one. So now I'm going to open it. So I'm going to open the papers and I'm going to, it'll take some time. Let me see if I can, mm, what is it? May, June, where was that? Um, 34. So let me open that. Sorry. It'll take me a minute to open that. So you'll have to wait, huh? Look at uh, look at the screen if you want to or patience. I'm here. I'm gonna answer the questions. Yeah, it's that that the problem with these YouTube comments are that there are too many of them at a time. So yeah, I'm just opening the past papers. Just give me one second. So I'm gonna answer. Th uh, so now, I, for the next twenty minutes, if you have a specific question, only mention that. Okay, this year, this question, this part. 
so that I can answer some of those questions now for people, you know. So somebody is asked now 2020, sorry. Um, June 34, question number one. 2020, June uh, 34, question number one, part number five. So the question in per is was a titration question. And I bet you the part they're asking for is water of crystallization. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. The... Uh, remember one thing that people seem to forget now there's a just like you can take mass and divided by MR or more correctly molar mass that is the right term molar mass so mass over this is by the way 2020 June paper 34 question number one part I don't know part five I think so it's mass over molar mass is equal to moles. So you know that you can also do the same for grams per dm cube. So grams per dm cube over molar mass gives you moles per dm cube. And if you have calculated the moles in 10 cm cube, so the way this works always is you'll have data that helps you calculate moles per dm cube so you find that information out first then uh, you I then uh, most cases in the lab you'll be given grams per dm cube and therefore using those two you find the molar mass which by the way is the same thing as an MR so in the labs just under remember this relationship grams per dm cube over MR is equal to moles per dm cube and moles per dm cube you can find if you have the moles in a specific volume so if you have the moles in a specific volume you will be able to find what you call it uh, the concentration so generally speaking in moles questions they tend they tend to ask you to find a certain number of moles in a certain volume having that data if you have the moles and the volume for a certain data, you plug them into n equals to CV, where C gives you that information about moles per dm cube. And then using that here and grams per dm cube that they have supplied in this question, you'll find molar mass. And that's the MR. Once you find the MR, you can find X after that. All right. So I'm assuming that's the part. Yeah. ABMG, I'm so glad you're listening to my videos. Uh, both answers are acceptable. I'm very anal, so I know how the apparatus works. And any mass balance key initial error is also twice that of the half the smallest division. That's why whenever you buy a mass balance from any scientific guy, they will say, they will actually quote, it's 200 grams plus or minus 0 0.0, 0 0.1 grams. They will quote the decimal place as the error so if you halve the error and then you multiply by two you get the same as that so it is that also if you don't believe me you can use whatever you like to i know the right chemistry and i'm using it they actually accept the answers for half the smallest division because they don't think the kids will know that much but you can use either or half the smallest division is the error for one reading so that should work for you all right Please, can you tell me the second and third initial reading should be zero? No. Rizwan, the in initial reading for the second and third can be anything as long as if you've done this rough reading and you know that whatever you take, the answer, if let's say your in rough reading was 27 cm cube, then you can take anything initial below 23 cm cube. Because if you take initial as 30 and you are going to get 27 more from it, you can't because it ends at 50. So you should have enough volume to run it all out. But you could actually start at 10, 12. I was short when I, was, when I used to do labs. I'm still short, by the way. So I'd never fill it up to zero because seeing at eye level was so difficult. So what I would do was I'd fill it up to 10 or 11 
or you can even start from 10.5150 if that matters who cares anything that is high enough that gives you enough volume that should be fine your teacher you don't have to start from zero no okay uh yeah every one significant figure you do wrong you lose one mark that's it all right uh if you have silver nitrate and agno3 understand that silver nitrate and agno3 are testing for what silver ions or halide ions so either you can add hcl to silver ions or silver nitrate ions to hcl you are looking for this chemical change where you make a white ppt all right also just use your shirts as white background if you know what it's not that difficult to see you get tiles sometimes okay i don't ha huh? so it's a good question that I, that i asked i never carry out any gas test and you know why i don't carry out any gas test because most of the gases have a smell so i use my nose that ammonia smells sulfur dioxide smells now the other gases you might wonder hey some of them i will have to test but some of them i don't like for example the only way to cut carbonate is if you have a if you only way to have carbon dioxide gas is if you are adding acid to a carbonate so they will either tell you they're adding an acid or a carbonate so you already know what you're adding so you're already looking for effervescence of gas so if i get effervescence of gas i smell it carbon dioxide has a very stale smell they say it's odorless but it's stale all right yeah okay and hydrogen gas is given off when a metal reacts with acid so and a metal is not something you can hide it's a silvery piece so if you are told add this silver thing or a gray thing into something you know you're adding a metal so you know if the gas is given off it must be hydrogen so i always know that so i already know what gases i'm going to get so i never bother with testing for gas ha huh. you can't really tell oxygen so if your nose fails you then you'll have to test for gases and then you test for the lightest gas first you know why the gas is the first one to evaporate away okay now uh significant figures always use uh the the key for lab by the way is use as many or one more significant figure as your i uh, readings so if your burette is to three significant figures i would say your calculation should be to four significant figures i always say four all right okay now let me see if i've exhausted these questions the one that I took pictures of so yeah faraz has asked one question like four times so i'll do that probably first also there are more of you who have asked this uh, zishan mufti has said 2012 32 version question number 1 and faraz has asked 2012 question 34 question number 1 you guys are asking very old questions but okay okay now chaos has been asking a question also so i'll look at that one also so if i'm looking at this question right now this is 2020 so so far i'm sorry if this class is not very useful to all of you i'm trying to be as useful as i can on a live stream taking questions so 2023 november paper 33 question number 1 d so it's got be very specific question so i'm hoping that i can solve this one for him okay and i'm quoting the question here just in case you want to open the question up okay uh 13 uh 33 question number 1 so the question number 1 says part d okay part d says a pipette has a max accurate to 0.06 cm cube so a pipette or a pipette has only one error and they have given that error to you and they have said is plus or minus 0.06 cm cube then the maximum percentage error in measuring out fa4 i bet you the pipette that you use whose volume was 25% 25 cm cube to 0.06 over 25 into 100 is how you'll get the percentage i believe it will come out to 0.24% all right now if they said a beaker that part you'll have to look at the beaker 
your beaker has divisions so unless you have unless i have that beaker in front of me i can't tell you maybe the beaker smallest division was 50 cm cube or 25 cm cube whatever the smallest marking is so let's say 25 cm cube was the smallest reading in a beaker so was the maximum error oh sorry in the mass i'm so sorry didn't say the mass the mass may the mass may the error is 0 0.01 for each reading but there's initial and final reading so i said 0 0.02 that over the mass of fa1 used whatever mass you have into a hundred percent and you get that from there and you gotta give me one second so i'll just 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 be with you yeah i need to get off from my seat and just be back in a second if that's okay okay Hi, sorry, I'm back. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, this was that question, the error part. Uh, the errors, I mean, errors are something that uh, I believe that we can all kind of do. So, I've done this question. I'll answer the one about uh, winter twelve thirty four question number one. Winter twelve thirty four question number one. So, two thousand and twelve uh, November paper thirty four question number one. I don't know what he wants me to do. I'm not doing the whole question though. So I'm assuming that somebody wants some help at some part. Um, winter twelve thirty four. Why can't I find winter 12? Okay, okay, there you go. Now we're on 34. Question number one. Okay, question number one, it seems to be a titration of thiosulfate, hydrogen peroxide, and iodide. I don't know how to solve a titration question without having the whole something with me. So it kind of becomes useless. Uh, Mm. It's time to time out more people. Yeah. Yep, thank you for that. And the next time they do that, I'll, I'll just kick them out. Okay. Why would you discuss optical isomers right now? Yeah. Sorry, guys. That's nice. I don't know if we had time or this is beautiful. Okay. Mm. I'm enjoying this. Oh, that cleans up a lot of chat, by the way. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm back. So, this question didn't have much. All right. So... Rizwan, you said if I can take second titration at 10, but a third titration at 20. Yes, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine, Hassan. All right. Uh, would you guys prefer if I ask a couple of latest questions? You know, that would be nice to do. Look, uh, as far as quantitative analysis is concerned, understand that I can't really help you remember much stuff right now. Has, all right. So, yeah, Hassan, just because you are spamming, you got to wait for a bit. So I'll do Fatma's for now. All right. Okay. No, Dua, you don't reduce the percentage error from where you start from. Please. You use the percentage error by taking a larger val val volume. And that larger volume can never change titration. You don't have control over the volume of titer. That determines the error. And that you can't control. That's given from the chemicals. So, the own, by starting from anywhere, it doesn't change the error. Guys, please. You never use the initial reading for any error. You use percentage error for volume of titer. That's the difference between the final and the initial. So if you start from, uh, 
Look, some of you might say, let's start from zero and go to 26.50. I say start from 10 and I go 36.50. Somebody starts from 20 and goes to 46.50. All three have the same tighter and therefore all three have the same percentage error. Oh my God. Because the error in this reading is 0 0.05 and this reading is 0 0.05. Total error is 0 0.10 over everybody's title is exactly the same and that will be the percentage error it will not be yeah rate of reaction yeah you got those who are asking for rate of reaction please okay anybody is spamming the something twice i'm just gonna ban them from the channel forget putting them on timeout just <coughs> remove them from the channel that's the easiest thing i can do you know because i can't deal with this guys i really can teach or handle this man okay so there are two three past paper questions that i'm going to now do so okay i'm saving them right now so first was this question somebody asked 2012 no i did that one now yeah, the one that says on the screen right now. Uh, Moaz, it'll be, it, if you can re remember the test results of cations and anions, you do the paper faster. Hence, I would always suggest everybody to remember the questions well. Now, this is a very specific question. So, let's look, take a look at this question. This one, this one is uh, June 2019. No, Vasif, I can't do them right now. Thank you very much. There will be a time in my life I can do them, but not today. It's a stupid time to ask me that question, right? Given that I'm here to solve people's problems for tomorrow's test, which I also know in the real scheme of things, who gives a shit about a test? I really couldn't give a shit about A-level results. It not makes somebody a human being. But sadly, what most people want help with, and when I can help somebody out, I try to. So I'm doing that right now, but I'll answer yours later. Now, somebody's asked me, on June 2019, question 3, part C3. Now, Fatma, you have not mentioned which variant. So, I don't even know which one I'm looking at. So, I opened one, but there's no part 3 in it. So, kind of gets lost. I think there are only for questions 1 and 2. There are 3. If you're asking about... Uh, hmm okay so yeah okay saber let's do that how about that all right okay you should learn that okay let's do that because i can't even I know which part the person is given so i can't even tell that i'll do this one it's just because it's a good question look at somebody finally quoted number 33 so 2020 33 question number one now question number one of this paper saber the one he's mentioned here not the one chin that I have here, but this one, 20. 2020. Okay, great. I'm assuming you mean paper 33 of June. Question 1C, part 5. C, 5. So 1C has no part 5. Why are you guys giving me parts that don't exist? Okay, really? Uh. <sighs> Which one is this one? 33 question 1C. So 33 question 1 C part, which part? Why does people like, I swear, man, I think somebody's just messing with me. I will always go with identification of ions first. Well, no, they're not cancelled. Exams are not cancelled. Stop spreading some rumors. All right, completely. Now, okay, do you guys, how about, how about this? Since I really can't seem to answer anybody's question much, uh, 
How about I just take a look at some of the latest papers and just do them in front of you to explain you what I'll be thinking when I'm solving the question. Maybe that will help to let you know how should you think when solving a question. Uh, since I can only discuss the titration ones, the salt analysis ones. All right. The qualitative analysis ones. Because that's really the ones I can teach you right now. The others are only practiced by doing them. And there's not much I can help you by doing them. All right. Errors in rate of reaction. Uh, the only error you can make in rate of reaction is by having a, mm, a sharp, you know, a slow reaction takes more time, but it's also not very good with knowing when the end is happening. So um, sometimes the reaction is fast. A good way to improve that is make it slower by diluting it. Uh, yeah. Okay, so basically, I want to take you guys through some of these questions and uh, tell you what I'm thinking when I look at these questions and what you should be thinking when you look at these questions. Let's hope I can put them here. Okay, so... Now, it seems not being opening. That's so strange. It's not opening here. I don't know what's happening. Hmm. Okay. So let me do this again. Okay. It's taking some time to paste the question. You gotta wait for a bit. Uh, No, you can still use a solution from the other experiment. Uh, yeah, I don't know, is he? I might, might not. Okay. You asked 15,000 times that question, which was the problem. Okay, my app is crashing right now, so you got to give me a second. Oh. Hmm. You're gonna also let me find the question. That's uh, yeah, that's so stupid. I can't even. Yeah, there's something that's a problem. Yeah, you gotta bear me for one minute. I'm taking 2020 questions and solving some of them. If that's what will help you guys at this day, at this evening, because that's the one thing I can do. All right. So, this is the last. So, I'll start from 2020. Uh, what do you want to start with? Uh, March. Let's start with March 2020. Then go to June 2020. The reason why I'm doing latest is because you understand that the way they ask question changes. And that helps us to solve the questions, right? So, if I look at 2020, March. This is the one they, they sent to India, right? So... If I ask this, and I will actually open this here, open it in Notability. Yeah. 
Do you see this? This is, yeah. So this is that question that came. I hope you guys can see this. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I put two SWOT analysis videos on the channel, by the way. So that should help some people out watching them right now. Okay. Uh, my recommendation is don't skip out any calculation. Do every single calculation. The only thing I can help you with at this stage is qualitative analysis. So let's take a look at this question. This question says uh, that this is question number three. And the year I'm looking at is, by the way, this is March 2020. Paper 30, whatever that is. All right. Now, if you had done some of the theory I already mentioned in the video, they're giving you FA3, which is aqueous hydrogen peroxide. Now, hydrogen peroxide is that one unique guy that can act as a reducing agent and an oxidizing agent at times. And that's something you should remember because they can act both as a reducing and an oxidizing agent. They're saying an FA6 is some solution that contains two cations and one anion. Now, this is very much fun. Generally speaking, if a solution is of two cations and two anions, they could have made any two cations and anions and mix them together. But many times, if they give you two cations, remember, the, they will not give you, this is important to realize, they will not give you two cations if both of them, in, sorry, they will not give you two cations in one solution if both of them form a precipitate. Because then you cannot tell whose precipitate is what with NaOH. So most cases, may, the moment I, if I was a student who knows my theory, the moment I see two cations and one anions, I know their ammonium is, one of them is likely. So I write with a pencil here, ammonium is likely because they can give you two cations without one being ammonium because ammonium is easy to detect, especially if they want you to detect both ions. You know, if they want you to detect both ions, then one of them has to be ammonium because that's the only way you can detect two ions. One will precipitate and one with any which you warm it up and you helps you smell the fumes. Now I've told my students all across that I actually smell for ammonia. Ammonia is a very distinct smell. And when you are testing for gas, smell it for ammonia. Then because you really cannot do the litmus paper red thing, the red litmus is a blue thing. It's so frustrating. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, yeah. I think after uh, after review, uh, few minutes I gotta look at my browser also. Okay, who's spamming now? Now this is like. Thank you. No, SO2 and ammonia don't have the same smell. One smells pungent and one smells bad. There's a difference between pungent and bad. Pungent and what we might call in Urdu, tez, like lagne wali. And bad is just like, you know, smells like shit. That's bad. And one smells like strong, strong and shit. So ammonia is strong and SO2 is shit. Also, ammonia can only be uh, smelt if you just added NaOH to that. And so if you add NaOH and you get a bad smell, that must be ammonia. SO2 is never released when you add NaOH. Understand that. SO2 is released when you add acid. While ammonia is released when you add NaOH. So whatever you add should help you tell you which uh, gas to get. And once you know what gas you're looking for, it makes it easier. So here, I know I don't know what cations and I have. But they're asking to me add NaOH and then heat. You see, the heat part is the giveaway. The heat tells me that, hmm, they, I have to tell both cations, so guaranteed one of them is ammonium because when I heat something, I'll say gas evolved, I'll smell the gas on warming or heating. And then you write the test for gas. That turned red litmus, red, 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 red damp litmus or damp red litmus paper blue. And obviously, the other cation will be a PPT. You got to figure out which PPT that is. Either it's uh, blue PPT, white PPT, white PPT soluble, off-white PPT, green PPT, uh, bright green PPT, dark green PPT, you know, uh, pale green PPT. 
you know that kind of stuff so that's what you have to remember all right okay so yeah the, s the ammonia smells in by the way okay so if you ever want to know what ammonia smells like what you should go to do in the lab tomorrow is when you enter the lab you'll be given as a reagent ammonia you should open the bottle and smell it that's the smell of ammonia you'll know it tomorrow you don't need me to tell you that you go to the lab open the bottle smell it also if you're sleepy open the bottle smell it or if you're knocked out and sick open the bottle smell it Whatever you have, that ammonia will solve it. It's exactly what's in smelling salts. You know, when an American football players get knocked out, rugby, they get knocked out, they're given ammonium salts to smell. This wakes them up. It hits it. Yeah, right here, right here. You know, yeah. Curve is a line of best fit, Fatima. Curve is a line of best fit. Curve is a line of best fit. There are Curve is a line of best fit. Curve is a line of best fit. Please remember. Saying line is a curve. Please, a curve is a line. Just try to understand that line does not mean straight line. Line can be anything. Line can be, uh, this is a line. It is a very non-straight line, but it is a line. What's a line? My pen makes a line. My pen makes a line. Now, what I want to draw in purple, blue, that's a straight line. A curve is a line. Many lines of best fits are in fact curves. All right. Fatima, how do you know what is PPT, what is soluble? Very simple. If you can see through the solution, it's soluble. Take the liquid in your hand. And if you can clearly see through it, it's a solution. Like if you ever had Ruavza, I'm assuming that you might, you get a colored drink like uh, uh, Coke or uh, colored clear drink uh, that's, a uh, that's a solution that you can see through if you can't see through it is the it's a precipitate okay yes you write observations in the table all right yeah all right so here so now to the mixture add one uh, it sees now see so because they're saying to the mixture obtained add one cm depth of fe3 understand why knowing that this was h2o2 helped because they will only ask you to add to a2o2 if the cation could get oxidized so i bet this is either iron 2 plus or mn2 plus because then you add h2o2 to this mixture okay it'll turn red brown or brown and that will tell you that hey what happened here oxidation happened here so obviously if it's mn2 plus becoming mn3 plus you will write this but if it was iron you will write iron again look i'm not even telling you what the answer is i'm not even looking at the answer i'm saying this is what my mind will be thinking when i see the h2o2 that it can only be about those cations that get oxidized do you understand what I'm saying? If the three questions, 40 minutes each, exact times, or 40, 30, 40. If there are two questions, 50, 70. 50 for, again, qualitative analysis first. Okay? Um, Solidarity analysis, learn, learn it, Shahi, learn it tonight, learn it tonight, learn it tonight, learn it. All the qualitative analysis notes, learn it tonight. Even if they give it to you, learn it. You know, it's like saying, well, you know, how to learn coding is all online. Can I still get a job? No, just because something is available doesn't mean you know how to use it or will you have time to use it at that fast. So learn it. Because right now, learning it will save you time doing the lab. All right. I have given you two links to my notes of theory for lab in the description, <coughs> in the comment section of this live stream, in the main comments. Check them out there. Rida PB2 plus is not in the syllabus. All right. So now let's look at the next part of the question. So this was fun.
See, H2O2 was here, so that you know it's going to be talking about redox. Then, it's talking about potassium manganate. So, potassium manganate is an oxidizing agent. And you got acid. So, what is the acid good for? It's good for both the H plus ions and the sulfate anions. So, at this point, I know I can test for sulfate anions using barium. And I can test for H plus ions using carbonates or hydrogen ions. That's literally what my mind thinks the moment I see, hey, they've given acids and manganate but oh they're going to use these two to test for seven and eight so basically one is an oxidizing agent to use so you can use that for seven and eight but two has both h plus ions and sulfate ions so two can even confirm for me if barium exists or no if it makes a ppt if two makes a ppt therefore barium exists and if two gives me bubbles of gas therefore then i'm adding it to a carbonate you know that's what beauty of a 2 is. It can tell me both if something is a carbonate because an acid forms effervescence with carbonates and because it has sulfate ions, I know it can also test for barium. And manganate tests for, it's an oxidizing agent, so it tests for some things that can get oxidized. And 7 and 8 have one cation, one anion each. So, first of all, you should always check out which how many tests have they given you? You got to identify the anion in 7 and you got to add Fa2 and Fa1 and 2, 7, 2 and 3. Yeah. So here, when you add sodium carbonate, either you're going to get a PPT of carbonate or you're going to get effervescence of gas. So either you're going to get PPT or CO2. PPT or CO2. So PPT of carbonate, so it'll be a metal carbonate PPT. That's how my mind is thinking at the exam. So if I see a PPT, I can get that. Yeah. They are in the public comments of this uh, chat. Qualitative analysis notes is a link there. Okay. I even hearted it and liked it. Maybe you'll see it now. I don't know. It's there. All right. Now they're saying to one C add an equal volume of FA2 and FA1. So when you say Fa2 and Fa1, what you're doing is you're acidifying manganate. <laughs> and you're putting manganate to both of these. But the funny thing is, what are they add asking you to add after that? Starch. Why would they ask you to add starch? To test for iodine. Which means that since, so the anion, one of the anions, I don't know which one, but one of the anions would be iodide that gets oxidized to iodine that is detected by starch and that's how you got to start thinking okay, one of these two will be iodide that with KMnO4 becomes iodine so becomes red brown and then when you add starch it becomes black PPT whichever one one of the two all right most likely one of the two all right Aren't you seeing, not in this uh, chat, in the main chat, all right? So it's not there? How can that be? It's there. Let me just, oh. Uh, did my live stream end? Why change the channel? Why did that happen? Okay, it's still going strong, right? No, it stopped. No, hello? Hi guys, can you see me? I don't know, if I'm not enough you're watching the video. Okay, so when the live goes away is when you see the comments. Oh, I'm there, okay. I thought I got disappeared because I was only seeing a black screen. <laughs> Obviously, I'm saving the screen, this thing. So that's, look, so look, understand, I can't give you a magic pill to remember everything for the exam. What I can give you is this, simply speaking, to look at the data in the question and that helps you trigger and narrow down the things you might have to be able to look for. So like if I know I'm adding starch, then I'm looking for iodine. 
which means I'm looking for iodide ions. That's the hint. Hence, you improve your observations that way. All right. So therefore, one of the anions will be iodide, right? And yeah, it'll have to be. And I bet it's Fe7. Now I can open the answers and let you know, but that's what it is. This is which one is this paper? Yep, this is iodide. And Fe8 is. Okay, so if it's silver nitrate, then it confirms the iodide here but the other anion will come out here and they did not say identify fa8 as separate cation anion so i bet you that that what you saw here was a gas evolved meaning you saw effervescence here so in fa8 if you saw effervescence it meant fa8 had h plus ions and the anion will come from test number three so either it will be hbr HCl or HI depending on the anion that gives you the test from silver nitrate but if I look at the answer it's HCl so this must be white PPT and effervescence here means it's an acid and Cl minus ion so Fe8 is hydrochloric acid and how do I to confirm the cation of Fe8 you add a metal like magnesium ribbon when you add magnesium ribbon what do you get you get bubbles of hydrogen gas which pop lighted splinters. The test for hydrogen gas. All right. Yeah. Star yeast is used to make cakes, by the way. So I don't think you've ever used yeast in chemistry. Starch, on the other hand, is used to test for iodide. Iodide. All right. Now, where are we at? So, okay. Mm. Okay. Now, test starch is used to test for iodine, which generally is given off from iodide. It's been oxidized from iodide to iodine. And then we use starch to identify, hey, we didn't have iodine before. Now we have iodine. That's okay. Thank you, Athena. Yes, you'll get the links soon. Okay. Alcohol and ketone tests. Alcohol is you tested by adding di uh, manganate. It turns purple to colorless. You, if it's ketone, you just add 2 for DNPH. Ketones and aldehydes give 2 for DNPH. You have to learn the theory from the notes or the videos. So if you don't know that, I would suggest spend that time looking at the alcohols and ketones videos because they are given certain tests. 2 for DNPH is for ketones and aldehydes. Tollens is only for aldehydes. Methyl ketones are aqueous iodine. All right. How do I know there's H plus in FA8, Shifa? I know it because, because, because I told you now, the moment my I saw them adding solid sodium carbonate, it could only be to either check for a PPT with carbonate or especially if I'm adding solid, I'm actually looking for carbon dioxide gas given off. And FA8 gave me that gas. It gave me effervescence. So when it gave me effervescence, the only thing that gives me effervescence with carbonates is acids so it's an acid you get mm, uh, hydrogen ions i'm deaf you're definitely getting qualitative analysis that's what i know for sure all right so looking at this question is kind of done let me try the next one what do you say okay now the next one is um hmm okay Any scale where the graph is more than the points are more than half the graph. Take any scale where the points are more than half the graph. Cover half the graph. I will never make a prediction of what is likely, 
what is unlikely i never know this shit so please don't ask me i don't please yes never know it so this one is june uh what do you call it june 2020 paper 32 okay hmm i know you can't see me you'll see me now as opening another paper using this beautiful app called notability no yes they differ well katadha katadha or is khatad dha i don't know yes if the plots look like a curve it will be a curve if it looks like a straight line it will be a straight line that's how i know that's how i know can you stop i can't give you my notes in the middle of a live stream uh, they're on the chat channel and i will have to put you now on a timer because you keep asking the same question stop asking the same question stop asking the same question you should so umar you should solve every question as it finishes do not wait to do the calculations at the end the calculations are where the most marks are so guys this is an important thing to understand do not wait to do the questions at the end do them together all right do them together all right I want to answer this question like how the scale of graph something or can the can the scale on the graph start from something not zero yes mh rizvi it can you ask a question i answer yes it can fatima i am thinking of ending this another 20 minutes i'm just going to quickly go over some more solve analysis and end this right now because it is becoming a shit show for half the questions but i can't even understand what people are asking so instead of wasting everybody's time uh, maybe they can study and i can just end this in 20 minutes quickly go over two three more qualitative analysis from 2020 and be ending it how about that okay so <laughs> Now look at this question. It says here FB six contains a cation and an anion. Carry out test to identify the cation. So when they are asking you to carry out the tests, you should know the reagents that test for cations. You first use ammonia NaOH aqueous in test number one, and in test number two, you use ammonia aqueous. That's what you do, and you should make a table always. make a nice little table please take a pencil tomorrow don't go without a ruler and pencil okay and the english that you use should be nice okay so you should say 2 1 cm depth of fb6 add naoh aqueous drop wise meaning drop by drop but till in excess and then warm they have to be three parts adding drop wise then excess then warm and with ammonia there are only two parts you do the same thing to 1 cm depth of fb6 sorry about the atrocious handwriting it's too late in the night add ammonia aqueous drop wise till in excess now the reason why you warm it is here you will say gas evolved or no gas evolved if you don't smell ammonia you say no gas evolved but if you smell ammonia you say gas evolved that turned damn red litmus paper blue and adding nh you get a ppt then in excess you tell me is the ppt soluble or not that's how testing should be done so you add drop wise to check for ppt then in excess tell me if it's soluble or not all right that's that's why warm warming warming is the only way to have the alkali of nh react with ammonium ion to release ammonia gas 
This is the reaction that releases ammonia gas from ammonium ion. This can only work by at least warming it or heating it, not boiling it. You know how much is too much heating? When there's boiling bubbles. All right. I'm looking at Uh, Vanya, the test for ethan ethan diac is it oxidized. This is oxidized by KMnO4. KMnO4. No, it doesn't react with tolerance, but it reacts with KMnO4. The without warming, ammonia cannot be released by ammonium ion. That's why you warm. Otherwise, without warming, you cannot test for this cation. Okay. There is nothing called a cloudy white solution. Please remember this. You just there's nothing if if it's a white solution, it's a white PPT because there ain't no white solution because white solutions don't matter. I'm just kidding. White solution don't exist. If it's white, it's a precipitate. If it's see through, it's colorless. If it's white, it's a precipitate. OK. Vince Vineet, I have no idea what that means. How much should we heat? You warm it. Warm it for like 10, 20 seconds. That's more. Take him. That's it. Then moving along. Then they're saying put two cyanide V6. Same guy. The same chemical. Now they're doing the anion tests. So now they're adding silver nitrate. Which means they're either testing for chloride, bromide or iodide. So you look for color. You look for white, cream or yellow. Then you check if it is soluble in ammonia okay now test number three they're asking you to add sodium thiosulfate to the other they're saying pour the containers into it into a clean test tube and then they're asking you to add sodium thiosulfate that is very interesting because sodium thiosulfate is a reducing agent so it's going to oxidize something else so what do you think is going to oxidize most likely Okay, so, oh, sorry, it's a reducing agent, so it's going to reduce. So, generally, it can reduce a cation, um, yeah, so, because cations will get reduced, ions don't. So, it might reduce the cation, meaning, what cat? I don't remember all that's possible, that are actually reduced, but you should know that Fe3 plus can become Fe2 plus, and Mn3 plus could have become Mn2 plus. This reduction, because this is a reducing agent. And uh, anions, the ones that you're given, get oxidized. So you don't have anions that get reduced. So thiosulfate is generally used to either uh, reduce, yeah, K oxidizing agents like K oxidizing agents like KMnO4, or reduce iron three plus or Mn three plus. All right, by lowering or increasing the strength of the Bunsen flame. And if you cannot lower and increase the strength of the Bunsen flame, Moza Moaz. Then what you do is you take it the test tube away from the flame. Take it away. It'll be gentle heating. If it's on the flame, strong heating. I think that they forgot to teach common sense in some grade in class six and seven, probably in your lives. That's why we practical seem so alien to us. I can't show you how to draw a proper graph. A proper graph is a graph. You guys are overvaluing the graph. It's just points that you make a line. If the points look like a curve, make a curve. If they look like a line, make a line. If it looks like up and down then there are two lines and you draw the line of intersection that's it you guys are making too much of a deal out of a graph it's just a graph you've been drawing graphs in class in class math since class what nine and ten yeah and copper 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 also gets reduced sorry copper two plus can become copper one plus and these three are the ones that get reduced and oxidized and my videos that i uploaded just before this have that explanation also in them all right and yeah that kind of stuff all right then what do we have did use the formula for fb6 
that's what you have to do. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, this will confirm for you the hela, the anion, and this will give you the cation. That's how you'll do this. Then, this is FeCl3. Now they've given FeCl3. So, it's Fe3 plus and Cl minus. Then they're saying add Ki. Now, Ki is also a reducing agent. So what can Ki, and then they ask you to add starch. Starch test for iodine, iodine. So what must have happened was that iodide would have converted iron 2 to iron, iron 3 to iron 2, which is oxidation, reduction, sorry. Not oxidation, reduction. And iodide must have gotten oxidized. So the starch will give you the black, or what do you call it, the? black ppt blue black or black ppt which tells you the iodine was made which tells me that here if i have to explain this and i bet they asked for somewhere um yeah here so here you have iodide becoming iodine and then blue black ppt here now obviously you'll see this but i'm just saying okay, if you're already looking for it you'll find it all right I'm not angry. Uh, rate of reactions graph, graph from the origin? Well, I don't think so. Yeah, because you're measuring the rate of something, right? So I don't think they start from the origin. Mm. Uh, group 2 theory, group 2 theory, group 17 theory is important to do. Okay. Thank you, Manal. Yeah. Yeah, dude, like. Yes, the video will always be here. Yes, the video will always be here. Okay. All right. Um, what else? Yes, I'll keep the video. This was 2020 papers, right? And again, FB3 with sodium thiosulfate with NaOH. Now, what FB7, we already knew had FB3+. And I told you, you know, S2O thiosulfate is a reducing agent. So most likely, it was reducing Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus, which when you add NaOH, would give you a green PPT. Because if NaOH gave you a brown PPT, it proved Fe3 plus. But if NaOH gave you a green PPT, it proved iron 2 plus, which will then mean that uh, S uh, this guy had reduced Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus. That's the kind of thinking you can use to do this. And the 8 is FeSO4. Now, you have got the 2 plus ion now. So, when you add H2O2, remember what is H2O2 doing? It is oxidizing Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. And then when you add NaOH, you're going to get what? Uh, Red-brown PPT. Because now, instead of testing for Fe2 plus, you had converted it into Fe3 plus. That's the beauty of this beautiful question. That here, Fe3 plus was becoming Fe2 plus. Then... But in the next case, Fe2 plus is becoming Fe3 plus. So, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of videos already for Hess cycle, Aisha. Why would Hess cycle help right now? I hardly have any videos for this. How do I test for hydroxide ions? Somebody asked me. Well, to test for hydroxide ions, you can add uh, copper ions. You can add calcium, uh, magnesium ions. Copper will make a blue PPT. Magnesium will make a uh, white PPT. If you have magnesium ions, sometimes you're given other chemicals like uh, you can add any iron 2 ion, iron 3 ion. These will all form some PPT with hydroxide. So you'll be given a solution that you can use in the exam. So any of the cations that give you a test with OH ions can actually be used to test for OH ions. 
I always like ionic equations, so I will always use ionic equations. How do you know H2O2 is reducing and not oxidizing? You have to see from the reaction. You can't just tell like that. You have to look at the reaction. Omar, so I can't tell you that by just saying, oh, this is when it is, this is when it is. Yeah. Uh, okay, no, no, no. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm in fact just looking at the next. So I'm going to get you guys the next question. Yeah, I'm just like, I think this is the last one. Um, Give me a minute. Hmm. 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 I'm opening the question now. One second. It takes a while to open the question. <laughs> yes it does sometimes clear solutions form that are colored a clear colored solution is not a ppt if it's not see-through-ish it's a ppt yeah all right so no this app is not crashing Bo. i am not it's i'm actually looking for the next question to put up in fact, so when I'm opening a paper, it hides itself. You see, that's how it works. So you don't get access to all the files. Thank you, Bo. Thank you for telling me everything that's good and bad in life. So this is the last of the last of the last. This one is 2020 June paper 35 question 3. The only there is basically after this question and everybody's past papers will be your first question tomorrow. Imagine next year if there is a past paper booklet this question will be right before the first question you'll do tomorrow. Yeah. I don't even know where Peter House is. I don't know where Peter House is. It is not in the city I live in. huh? Look, it's almost midnight and I am going a little crazy now. You can see. Yes, yes. Abdul Bari, your boy Chaudhary says, Chaudhary says, shout out to you. <coughs> <coughs> okay, man. Hmm. So. Hmm. Let's take a look at this question. It says FA5. Yeah, 
Yes, you can do chemist videos by beyond. Sir, can you do videos beyond Vasif? Hi, Vasif. I've heard your comment also and I've heard your comment here also. When I get some time in my life, first I'll spend it with my daughter. Then I'll look at doing chemistry. In fact, you might know this, might not know this, but I really don't like chemistry after A-levels. I'm, I'm so dumb with chemistry in my life. Every minute I get out of chemistry that I have to do for work, I spend it either on uh, technology or on design thinking or even graphic design or reading history or the Cold War or, uh, uh, you know, studying political science, something like that. That's what I do for my free time. And when I get some time, I also play a few sports. So outside of that, and then, then I, this is not including time with my daughter, so which was supposed to join me in this in this in this cast, but she couldn't join me in this cast because it's her bedtime and she's six years old and she has school tomorrow. Sir, Mr. Rizvi, mujhe bhi sona hai. Remember that. All right. So half. So this this question is about. There's a hot water bath for the next part. That's nice. <coughs> Generally, when they give you hot water bath, they're giving you for indirect heating. So when you do not want to heat directly, when do you want to not heat directly? When you generally have an organic compound that is flammable. That's probably why they have this hot water. So FA5 is this. Okay, now I'm going to go into my funny accent because you know what? It's the end of class. And since I got nothing really but a bad back from this class, I might as well get some entertainment from this class for myself to end myself in a good mood. Chemistry is done with you. I like this. I will put this here since everybody should realize this. Then maybe, uh, yes, I have studied computer science also. Yes, I have studied that. I have studied uh, history also. Yes. Are you left wing or right wing? Uh, I like my wings hot. Hot chicken wings. That is my wings. Neither am I left, neither am I right. I am a bit of both. Yeah, I am all about... Uh, no, he doesn't get my joke. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, I'm doing this last. We can't see you now. Okay, now. Okay, now. Look. It says here that is one cation and one anion. The sulfur is not present in FA5. I don't know why they had to tell me that, but they did. So NOH will tell you the observation. So obviously here, you would have to add NOH. Since you don't have to warm it, they didn't tell you to warm it. Then, mean, then you know it's not ammonium. So it's either going to be a white PPT soluble or insoluble or it's going to be colored ppt if i look at the answers it was supposed to be mn2 plus so i know that i'm going to get an off-white ppt so if you get an off-white ppt you should know it's mangan manganese right away and you waited for a while you let it turn brown on standing you let it do that eh? and even if you don't let it do that write that literally just write it because it's supposed to do that and just move on. And then you are to determine test on FA5. Now, you do not know what FA5 anions are. You don't know. What are you going to do then? Huh? Okay. Now, the order in which you do these tests matter. Alright. Okay. Unless, of course, they said something else about it. So, now, how do you do these tests? Now, for sulfate, uh, did they list something that we are supposed to know? Anions, carbonate, okay. So, here, They're saying sulfur is not present. Oh, that was the hint. Which means sul it is not sulfate and sulfite. Because if it was sulfate and sulfite, the first test you would do is test for sulfate ions. There's an order in which you do the test. You test for sulfate ions first, then you test for halide ions, and then you test for nitrate ions. So since there's no sulfate, what you do is you do the silver nitrate test. And in fact, it will get you the PPT that you want. 
that's the key all right then use the result to identify the ion you got that from there the reaction between fa5 and aqueous ammonia remember aqueous ammonia is basically an alkali an alkali means it has hydroxide ions so whenever a cation reacts with NOH or ammonia it reacts with the OH ions and forms a metal hydroxide that is always going to be the case so since we had manganese this is true for all by the way so it's MN2 plus plus 2 hydroxide will become MnO2 MnOH twice every single PPT given by NaOH and by ammonia is a hydroxide okay okay the don't worry photon in a double slit i will tell you something very very important in life these exams are worthless what is important and that has value that you cannot measure right now is the work you put in it if you guys have been lazing in your ass around the last two months and this is the only thing you have studied then it indicates a problem in your life where you need to realize that even things you don't like you have to plan to solve beforehand and if you can teach yourself that then you can conquer anything you want to in life and yeah that's what i'm going to say so that's it isn't the grade that matters it is what you have you done to try to get the maximum grade that matters all right <laughs> excuse me yes that's a large sneeze now in this question what type of reaction will occur when hydrogen peroxide is added to iron FA5? Remember, what does FA5 have? FA5 has what? Uh, they're saying add hydrogen peroxide, then add equal sodium hydroxide. Now, what does hydrogen peroxide do? It's an oxidizing agent. So, it is oxidation of manganese. Or, you can say it's a redox reaction. Because what will happen is when you add H2O2, and then you add any which instead of getting an off white PPT, you'll get a brown PPT, which tells me that it is MN3 plus, which proves that H2O2 has oxidized MN2 plus to MN3 plus. Okay. And then we got the organic bit. So the last thing I'm doing is organic. You got primary alcohol, secondary alcohol, and you got tertiary alcohol. Now, KNO4 will not react with one of them. That is, will be a tertiary alcohol. So, if what you realize is that it didn't react with FA6, there was no color change. Therefore, FA6 is a tertiary alcohol, which by the way is methyl propane to all. Then, butane one all and butane to all may, the only way to differentiate these guys would be through iodoform because butane to all will actually be a to all which will have the ch3 choh group it will have this group that reacts with iodoform and they have given iodoform in the next reaction iodine with NaOH is iodoform so you don't need to test for this you already have tested for that one of these two will give you the pale yellow precipitate and let's say that one of them gave it uh, this one gave it which means that this one is the is the uh, this one is butane sorry butane to all why because this is only given by methyl alcohols and this is the methyl al methyl alcohol means CST CHOH okay <laughs> The thought of university acceptance depends on this great look you'll find a university to go to if you if you're a good student who's worked hard in life you'll find a place to study it's okay and i know life has anxiety uh maybe hopefully when you have kids you make sure they don't have the same anxiety you did make sure you give them enough confidence that it's okay it's just a stupid grade don't forget this time when you, they they become students you want them to achieve most. Your parents want you to achieve more, but use the right language to get them to be motivated. Anyway, so, yes, I think I'm done for now. It's midnight almost, and my wife has entered my room four times to check what the hell am I doing, talking to myself on the stupid camera. And I think this is enough for a random ass, you know, live stream. I think this is more than enough, huh? It's midnight. 
and I got to go. So, chaos. You can think whatever you think. I know some of your anxiety. I do. I don't doubt it. I'm not denying that your anxiety exists. I understand that. But there are also ways to deal with it. The human mind is the most powerful thing we know. It can do awful things and it can do the great things. Yeah, it can kill millions of people and it can help millions of people. And it can kill yourself. It can also screw with your head. And I understand that. That's why talking to somebody who can understand mind and look for mentors who can give you better understanding of yourself. There are a lot of online people who make who are creating content to help you understand yourself. All right. Okay. It's not being deleted. Don't worry. Why would I delete it? It's a free video. You know, I unless yeah. Thank you very much. You will not know it's reducing or oxidizing agent, Isham. You will just know what's reacting with. You'll have to figure out, okay, is it reacting with uh, what you call it? Uh, two iron 2 plus to make it iron 3 plus. So therefore, it's an oxidizing agent. If it's reacting with iron 3 plus to make it iron 2 plus, it's a reducing agent. So that's what you have to deduce in the, yeah. Yes, I do. And, you know, my way of dealing with anxiety, so I'm is to keep myself busy all the time. I'm one of the few people, I, you will never see me just sit idle because then I start thinking about all that is possible and not possible. And I'm going to do a lot of things to change that. And I'm doing that this year. I don't understand the question, Mozam. I don't understand. I, I saw the question earlier also, Moza. And I can't understand it from the way you've asked it. So I'm not going to even bother. I'm going to check out now. And then let's, since three hours ago, four hours ago, you guys are already leaving up to God the way you had practiced. So... I hope I helped somewhat. If I didn't, I'm sorry to waste your two hours. And uh, what I'll do is I will catch you guys, uh, you know, later. Keep the love coming. Pass on the comments. Pass on the messages. I want as many people to watch this video or other videos, which in fact are better than this stupid live stream. But thank you for staying with me for the next, the last one and a half hours. I had a great time. And I love you too. I love the love. And I don't like spam. So, I'm glad for the love. A lot of you. There are two there were two thumbs down in this live stream, but I can live with that. Because there were a lot of thumbs up. It's okay. I'll live with that. Anyways. Bye bye. Awesome. It's almost hitting the one mark forty mile mark. And at least I can give you confidence. Don't worry. Start question three first. Then two, then one. Three, two, one. Three. Two, one, or just if there are two questions, two and one. 50 minutes for the first question, we mean the last, we mean the solved analysis, and one hour, 10 minutes for the first question. You can actually do solved analysis in 40 minutes. Do that first. That's the most thinking part. You don't want to be the anxiety of finishing the exam for that. So do qu the solved analysis first and Make the right tables, write the units for everything for time, for volume, for temperature. Write the units. And I shall see you at the next live stream. Don't know when I do this, but I'll see you. Bye.